Welcome to part two of this Beastmen army guide. In the first part we looked at the roster and some of the units and what they can get up to. In part two we'll look at some of the different builds that you could bring against each of the different enemy factions and then some general pointers about the Beastmen. These builds will be balanced builds though. I don't do cheese builds or spam builds so they're just going to be general ideas for balanced armies that you could bring against each faction. And the builds will kind of be geared more towards online because you can choose your entire army. In the campaign, obviously you select your army and then it's not very easy to change units over. But the principles of what you could bring against each faction still apply. Now, to custom battles. Okay, let's start with the Empire, a very balanced faction with a strength in cavalry and artillery. Now I'm going to bring Kazrak along because 9 times out of 10 people will bring Karl Franz. So we've got to try and deal with him with some tough melee generals. I'm going to bring the Gorbal along to help out with him and to deal with the large. And then for spearmen, because the Empire have pretty good missile units, I'm going to bring the shielded spearmen so that they don't get cut apart by all the missiles. As for my main infantry troops, I've got some options. The Beast of Gore unit is obviously a really strong unit. They'll be better for fighting great swords perhaps. The Gore herd are pretty strong with high melee attacks so I might try and take a couple of them but I'm going to have to try and keep them out of the way of the missiles. So I'll bring a couple of units to kind of go in front of them and hopefully soak up any missiles. We'll go with the Ungor herd, I think, because they're cheap and there's a lot of them. There's 120 goats in each unit. I was going to say men, but they do have shields as well, so they're going to be great for leading the charge. Bring a couple of missile units just to shoot at any of their missile units, not that they'll win terribly well if they do end up in a skirmish. Cavalry-wise, probably just go with regular Centigors, the great weapon ones. They're of course going to be better against the heavily armoured cavalries, but they're not really going to hang with the heavily armoured cavalry, so I'm going to try and avoid them basically. So I'll keep my centigors away from the cavalries in a one-on-one -on -one fight, unless I can get them some help. I'll bring some warhounds as well to get into the skirmishers, because I love doing that, and it would be utterly foolish to not bring minotaurs with great weapons to deal with the demigriffs. So we're going to need a unit of those. I might take some regular ones as well. The shielded variety, I think, because of all the enemy missiles that could take them down pretty quick handgunners and such and I've gone over my funds limit so I'm going to try and find a way to cut some costs ideally by getting rid of some spells and such that I probably won't really use speed and vigor we can get rid of that one I would use it but to save the money we'll get rid of it Kazarak got any he's got two plus 16 leadership spells let's get rid of one of those still over so I'm gonna to have to find another way to cut some costs perhaps cut the least valuable unit so I probably want all my infantry to take out their infantry. I think I'll go for skirmishers. I'll take one less unit of skirmishers. Because I've got plenty of other things that can deal with skirmishers. The centigors or my chaos warhounds. I'll bring an extra unit of spears because that's all I've got the money left for. So I've got my gore herd. They're going to do most of the killing provided I can keep them safe. Trying to keep them safe is these two, the ungore herd. And then I've got my shielded minotaurs to help out and support if they're fighting some tough units like great swords. Great Weapon Minotaurs for Demigriffs, Spearmen for Demigriffs, Gorbal for Demigriffs, or Reichsguard. Centigors and Warhounds I'll try to get after they're ranged, but I'll probably be kind of opportunistic with the Centigors if there's an opportunity to get a rear charge or chase down someone. I'll look for that, and I'll do the same thing with my ranged as well. So that is my Empire Army. Now, another thing that you can do, and you can do this against anyone, but it works well against the Empire because of their artillery advantage. So I'm going to go Kazrak again, going to go Gorbal again, but what I'm going to do is bring a lot of vanguard deployment units so I can deploy them all from the start of the battle. So it's going to be mostly gore herd and ungore herd units. So I'm going to bring a bunch of them, a bunch of them, and then missiles as well. I believe they're vanguard. I'll bring some of them. And then centigors have vanguard deployment as well. So some of those too. And all these units are going to start pretty much in the face of the enemy. I'll bring some Minotaurs to deal with the Demigriffs if there should be any, but they'll have to run up and join the battle a bit later on because they can't do Vanguard deployment. So yeah, all these I'm going to start right in the face of the enemy and I'm just going to rain down on them from the very start of the battle and give them no time to think, no time to do anything, no time to set up, no skirmisher time, no artillery time. Just get on them straight away. I'll give an example of this later in the video. Now for Bretonia, a horse-heavy faction with weak infantry. Now because Leon Kerr is so difficult to kill, I'm going to bring Kazrak again, and I'm also going to bring the Gorbal, because he's got a lot of health and he's hard to bring down. The Gorbal can also double up and help deal with all the horses. And speaking of the horses, we need to deal with those. So lots of spearmen, shielded variety because of the peasant bowmen. And for infantry, we don't need anything too special because their infantry isn't too special. 
Beast of Gore would probably be a bit of an overkill, so I think just some Gore Herd with shields will do the job. They have high melee defense, so they should be able to deal with men at arms pretty comfortably. We can always get charges in if they do need some help. I'll bring some missiles to go at their missiles or skirmisher cav. Cavalry wise, we're going to have to watch out for Grail Knights and Knights of the Realm. So I'm going to bring some great weapon centigors to help deal with the armor. I am going to try and avoid their charges though because they're pretty dangerous. I'll bring some Minosaurs with great weapons to help deal with the cavalry. And perhaps something else just in case the infantry need help. So all their infantry is anti-large, so a lot of these monsters are going to be pretty dangerous to use. Perhaps the Razor Gore Herd, because I can charge them in the back and then run away and charge them in. Use them like a shock cavalry, then they're not staying in fights with spearmen. So that's probably a good move. I'm going to bring them. Warhounds might also be a good call because of bowmen. And then 400 left over will bring an extra unit of spearmen. And that should be more than plenty to deal with all the horses. So I've got my hero and my general to deal with their hero and general. I've got plenty of spears to deal with all the cavalry. Axe infantry that will hopefully cut through their spearmen. I've got skirmishers to help with their skirmishers or any cav. Centigors to kind of get into their cav or anyone else that may need it. Warhounds to deal with the bowmen or skirmisher cav. Razor Gore Herd to go kind of where they're needed, where they can get charges in, they'll be pretty handy. And then Great Weapon Minotaurs to destroy anything on four legs. So that is an army that can deal with Bretonia. Now for the vampires, strong in the monsters, okay in the infantry and weak in the ranged. So because there's no dangerous generals, Malagor is coming along, we're going to take a wizard. Don't forget that he can spawn a Saigor, so I'm basically bringing a Saigor along as well, which can be useful. Taking advantage of the fact the vampires can't bring artillery. Spearmen, we don't have to worry about ranged, so I'm just going to bring the regular kind to save a bit of money. Then Gorehood as well, probably going to be a good option because again, don't need to worry about range, don't need shields. And they will be able to take down most of the enemy infantry, except for maybe Graveguard, of course. So that's what I'm going to bring some Beast of Gore for, to deal with any Graveguard. Then maybe just one unit of missiles to pester any of their flying units, or their units on the way in. They're not a great missile unit, so it's not worth bringing too many of them. Cavalry-wise, I'm not really sure. You could bring anything and it'll be useful. The Chariot will be great for taking out some of the infantry. Centigors could take on their cavalry. Let's do the monsters first. I think some... Probably some Chaos Spawn would be good here, actually, because... They can deal with most kind of infantry on some level, so Graveguard, they could give them a bit of a beating, they'll be able to take on Skeleton Warriors. So as long as we avoid the spears with them, they should be fine. Great Weapon Minotaurs, of course, they've got a lot of dangerous monsters, Vargolf, Vargeist, Crypt Horrors, gotta deal with those. Let's get back to the cavalry now. So I think Centigords with Great Weapons would be a good call, because we want to deal with any Blood Knights. Blood Knights are very dangerous unit, huge charge. So we're not going to charge into them, of course, but we are going to try and take them down. An extra unit of skirmishers as I've got the money left over, and that will do. So we've got Malagor, you can cast some spells, give us a Saigor. We've got some anti-large with spears and minotaurs. And then for infantry, we've got the Chaos Spawn who can help support the main infantry, which is going to be the Gore Herd and the Beast of Gore units. And then we've got some skirmishers just to deal damage where they can and to deal with any flying units. And then of course, Centigors to try and take on their cavalry. And that will be an army to deal with the Vampire Count. And that brings us to the Dwarves. Now, if you have the DLC already, you've probably learned the hard way that the Dwarves are Kryptonite for the Beastmen. They have such high armor that it's very difficult for the Beastmen to be able to stand with them long enough to do enough damage to get rid of them. So it's quite imbalanced at the moment, but because of the Generals, we're going to have to bring a lot of heroes. The Gorball isn't much use anti-large-wise because they don't have any large, but Ungram Iron Fist and such have so much health that we need to bring as many heroes, kind of as we can, but we don't want to waste money on too many heroes. You could try bringing tons of Beast of Gore units because they're the ones with armor piercing, it would make sense to bring them. But because of their such low melee defense, they can't even stand and fight with some of the cheaper Dwarf units. And the Beast of Gore units are very expensive. But let's try and build ourselves a legit Dwarf killing army. So perhaps just two units of Beast of Gore, I think, for the armor piercing needs. And then perhaps something like a Razor Gore Chariot with its huge charge bonus, if you can get it into the back of some units when they're fighting someone else, that could be really dangerous. Unless, of course, they box up. Razor Gore Herd for the same purpose, they've got a lot of armor piercing, so they can do a good bit of damage on their charges. Minotaurs, if you do bring some, you want to bring the shielded variety because the dwarves have strong skirmishers, and those skirmishers will cut through the big targets of Minotaurs pretty quickly. Same problem with the giant, he would be great because he has so much armor piercing, but he's so big that he just gets shot down very quickly. Unless you can get rid of the skirmishers first, he's not going to be able to do a lot. Saigor could be useful if you want to hammer them from a range, but you could just bring a Bray Shaman of the Wild, because then you get a Shaman and a Saigor for 1700 and the Saigor 1600, so it just doesn't make sense to bring a Saigor at any point ever, to be honest. Just spawn one if you want one, don't buy one. Buy a wizard instead. 
but there is a variety of spells, some of which may be useful against the dwarves. They're probably not going to be enough though to really deal with all the armor that is the main problem for the beastmen. Unless you want to get cheesy and start devolving everything, but that's certainly not how I roll. So we've got a bit of money left, but again, this army I think is just going to be too small because the dwarves can get so many units for the same price that it's costing me for some of this expensive stuff. Let's try, let's try an army with some lesser stuff. So we'll take Kazrak to deal with probably Ungrim or Thorgrim. We'll take a Shaman this time instead of a Gorbal. We'll try taking some of the lighter units. I think if we go for Gore Herd actually with shields, because they've got really high melee defense, so they should be able to survive quite a long time. And with that, we could use that to get some flanking in. And flanking is really the only way to beat the dwarves, especially when you have as low armor as the beastmen do. So we'll bring a bunch of them, and then for the armor piercing needs, we'll bring the Minotaurs to try and really do the damage and try to flank around with them as much as possible. Same with the Gore Herd, they've got the armor piercing and perhaps a chariot as well for the same purpose. Lots of armor piercing provided we can flank the crap out of them with it. And then we got 600 left over, maybe a unit of Gore Herd just for the extra damage or we could go for another shielded unit that will last a while. We'll go with the Gore Herd I think, try for some extra damage but that's another army, that's what you could try. I really haven't found anything that's truly effective against the dwarves yet. If any of you good people have suggestions, by all means, drop it in the comments, let us all know. But for now, just be careful when facing the dwarves when playing as the beastmen, especially online. If people see you playing as the beastmen, they'll change to the dwarves and then bring like loads of long beards with great weapons and a bunch of skirmishers. And there's not a lot you can do against that, to be honest. You just get worn out. So that's what you could try against the dwarves, but it is somewhat futile at the moment. Now for the Chaos Warriors, so to this one I'm going to bring the Beast Lord because I don't really fear too many of the Chaos Generals that much. Kolek is quite easily shut down with a couple of ranged units. Archaon is a wizard. The most dangerous one in melee is probably Prince Sigvold because he is a melee expert and a duelist. So for this one we don't need to worry about missiles. Spearmen without shields will suffice. And then perhaps some Beast of Herd because the Chaos have a lot of strong infantry, a lot of heavily armoured strong infantry, Chosen, Chaos Warriors, Forsaken. We've got to be able to deal with those. We'll bring some Gore Herd as well without the shields because we don't need them. We will bring one unit with shields because they last quite a long time because of their high melee defence. We'll bring some Skirmishers, mainly for Kolek or any other large. And then for Cavalry, we could go Great Weapons or Non-Great Weapons. I think we'll go Non-Great Weapons and try to use them more for just charging in the back. They may have light units because the Chaos do have some light units which someone may bring a ton of Chaos Marauders instead. So. It'll be good to have someone who can deal with non-armoured units. Monster-wise, we could bring some Chaos Spawn to support, but we'll probably go for some Minotaurs because they're always good. We've gone over the limit, we'll lose some Centigors. And we've got 200 left, not a lot we can do with that. I think that's quite a comfortable army though. I'm happy with that. We've got some anti-large, I've got the Gorbull as well, I forgot to mention that. we got those, they can deal with the General and with large. All that can deal with large. We may be a little bit lacking on the anti-large, but I think the strength of the Chaos is more their infantry than their large, although they do have some strong large. So we've got all this to deal with the infantry, we've got some bows to deal with Kolek and any light infantry, Centigors to deal with light infantry and just to get charges in all round, and then Minotaurs for any real damage dealers like Chosen. So that, I think, would be an okay Chaos dealing army. Unless you suspect your enemy may bring a lot of monsters, then you may want to go on the more anti-large side. Or perhaps even bringing a Razorcore Chariot would be great against some of those heavily armoured units. But for the most part, I'm happy with this Chaos Killing Army. Now for the Greenskins, an army that has a good well-rounded roster. Don't really have any weaknesses, but don't have any major strengths either. Just kind of good all round, maybe with a lacking in anti-large if anything. So I'm going to bring Malagor along, because while Grimgor is dangerous, we can kind of avoid him. And we'll bring the Gorbol just in case we need to deal with him and we can deal with large with that of course. And for infantry, they don't really have any well armored units other than the Black Orcs, so some lighter infantry should suffice. Ones with shields would be preferable because of the missile units. And then anti-large, shielded spearmen are probably a good call to deal with the anti-large. Some missiles can help with anti-large as well with things like Arachnoroks, and we can give a little bit back to them. We'll take some Razor Gore Hood to get some charges in in case there's any Black Orcs, and some Centigors, they can flank and get charges in all over the gaff. Now, no Beastmen army is complete without Minotaurs. We could go for any of them would probably be useful. I think we'll go for the non-shielded damage dealing kind. More to deal with Black Orcs than anyone else. Some Chaos Spawn, they're also great for dealing with all kinds of infantry, so they'd be a good shout. Their poison could take the oomph out of any Black Orcs that may come along. A Razor Gore Chariot, that would be pretty good actually, because they can just churn through all kinds of infantry. So we'll bring one of them along. 
and I think that will do us for an army to bring against the Greenskins. I've got my infantry to fight their infantry. I've got some range that can shoot at pretty much anything. Centigors we can get on the flank, can do a lot of damage to their infantry. And then all this stuff is going to be anti-large or just infantry killing. So it's going to support the infantry that I have. And yeah, that should be a good orc smashing army, I reckon. Now some thoughts and tactics on how to use the Beastmen. And this is all drawing from my experience with the Beastmen. I'm not sure what the community says or feels about the Beastmen. I don't really look into it. But if you have a different approach or disagree, by all means, drop it in the comments and we can discuss. So, the Beastmen. In my experience, they need to attack fast. You can't really wait around too long. If you're out of the range of artillery and missiles, by all means, you're in no hurry. You don't have to be a rush arm. But if you are taking fire, you need to move up quick and take advantage of that ground speed. And tying into that is flanking. You need to try and flank as fast as possible. A big strength of the Beastmen is that speed that they have so they can get around the back and flank quite easily. Because the Beastmen don't have a ton of armour, they can't survive prolonged combat for too long. So flanking is somewhat of a necessity. The quicker you can get units routed, the better this is going to be for your numbers. I've also found that protecting your better infantry units is pretty important. Send in a cheap unit of Ungor herd with shields to mop up any missile fire on the way into the front line and then have your better units behind them just ready to join the battle just after so that they don't take too much missile fire because the ones without shields, the best units like the Gore herd and the Beast of Gore herd, they're going to take a lot of missile fire and a lot of damage if you let them. And typically whoever the front line is will take most of the missile fire on the way in. And then much like most factions, if you've brought weaker infantry, you're going to want to support them with something. So ideally some monsters, minotaurs, chaos spawn. If you can get some razor gore units or cavalry around the back, that's only going to help that weaker infantry that may struggle against tougher units. So make sure you support the right places. And then you have the numbers side of things. Much like the greenskins, the beastmen can bring quite a lot in numbers. They have some cheap units which are also very large units. They have 120 in some of their cheaper units and their better units are generally 90. So with that, you can use that to your advantage for flanking. Just bring tons of numbers and just get around the back of everyone as much as possible. That can be a big winner. So don't be afraid to use some of that infantry, even though it may not be that great. Their numbers can make up for it. And then lastly, because of the extra ground speed that the Beastmen have, it makes them great for chasing off enemy units. So if you could spare maybe a cheap unit of Spearmen, and there's a routing unit of Chosen Warriors, you could perhaps chase them off completely off the map just by pestering them as they're routing. Because of that speed, they won't be able to get away, so you can just keep jabbing them, and that should keep them from coming back. It can be a really powerful tool just for getting rid of those most dangerous units. So those are my main points about the Beastmen. Now just to talk about a last brutal advantage. The Vanguard Deployment Army. As I said earlier, you can build an entire army and put it all in Vanguard Deployment right up in the enemy's face. So I've got a front line of Gore Herd here and a couple of skirmishers in the front. And then a bunch of Ungor Herd. They're going to be flanking with some Chaos Warhounds as well. These are the units that don't have Vanguard Deployment, which I brought, so they're going to have to rush up as quick as possible. And then some Centigors at the back. They're maybe a little bit far away and would be better at the sides, but I put them over there to demonstrate anyway. So straight away we can get all up in the enemy's face, we've eliminated the time it would take us to run across the battlefield, so any artillery they may have had, gonna do nothing. Now this is against the AI, so they don't really have like a proper formation, but the idea still comes off. Within the first 30 seconds of the battle, we're already starting to surround them and get the flank in on them. So this can be something that you can really take advantage of, and some of the units have stalk, so you can really play with that as well, even if you don't go for this sort of tactic. Those units with Stork can be really useful. You can just sneak up on them and out of nowhere, start blitzing them and ambushing them with all these different units. So you could do some really cool things with this sort of stuff. Online, it's particularly hilarious watching people try to defend the flank and panicking. So give this a try. It really caters to the fast paced style of the Beastmen. And with that, I shall conclude this video. This has been my examination and interpretation of the Beastmen. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the future.